Hi, Misha here, and we've got to look at Ferengi ships today because we do have a new model. We kind of teased and talked about a bit in Shuttle Pack 8. And more than that, in this loose series, kind of looking at first season villains in Star Trek shows that didn't work out. And in the very first episode, looked at the Kazon because a new Eagle Moss Kazon model of the Predator carrier came out. So with that, we'll look at the three Ferengi ships that pretty much make up all the Ferengi ships we've seen throughout Enterprise, Next Generation, Voyager, and Deep Space Nine. Over here, we have the 22nd Century Ferengi ship, Ulysses' ship from Enterprise. In the middle, we have the most common and well-known the Decora class, the Ferengi Marauder. And we have the Nafar class shuttle or shuttle pod. So, yeah, we'll dive into them. On to the spinny thingy we go. Lately, videos here and everything around the world's been pretty, pretty serious. So, really seemed like a good time to relax and kind of get away from it all. This is a, an old, older one from the Eagle Moss Starship Collection. It's been out for a while. And as far as I know, it only appeared once in Enterprise in the episode Acquisition that, um, you know, kind of bent canon. But it is the earliest Ferengi ship we see chronologically. We don't know a class or name. We just really see it kind of raiding or marauding the NX-01. Seems to be about 55 meters long and on the show it has a crew of four. So that's actually quite a bit of space for just four individuals. Keep in mind the uh, the NX-01 is only about 225 meters long and has a crew of between 80 and 100. So yeah, with that in mind, quite a bit of space on this. And it has your typical Ferengi look and feel. And it would be operated by the Ferengi Alliance because we know the Ferengi had a stable society for thousands of years with the first Nagus going back 10,000 years. But this would seem to be a privately operated vessel as really all the Ferengi ships seem to be. Because if they're at their best day, they're mercantile, cargo, traders, and at their worst, like I said, they're basically space pirates. As far as the model itself, it's pretty nice for Eagle Moss. It's actually a pretty good size, very flat. It's all metal top with a polymer bottom. It has this little thing here. It seems like a docking skirt to me. Something that could be coming up on a ship and locked to the side and weld through. Keep in mind, at this era, transporters weren't common. It is warp capable. So for its size in that era, not bad. And we don't really know how the Ferengi got warp. <laughs> Most likely they purchased it, I think, from the Breen. But yeah, if it's into the Ferengi design aesthetic. And I'm glad Eagle Moss did this model, just to kind of flesh out what is today a fan favorite race. But oh lord, did it not start out this way. When the Ferengi were introduced for the first time in season one of The Next Generation, this was the ship they had. The Ferengi Marauder, the Decora class. And this kind of gets to how they were essentially a failure, and most I'm sure know the story. They were teased in the very first episode of The Next Generation and would appear a couple of times in season one. They were meant to be the big bad in 
for oh so many reasons, including Gene Roddenberry's insistence they have giant peckers and giant ears, but still be short and have laser whips and wear furs. Yeah, they didn't work. Now, the whole being mercantile, traders, raiders, that was from the beginning. But they were much more aggressive and kind of hunched over and what have you. And this was kind of portrayed as a threat to the galaxy class, at least in some extent. It's about 366 meters long. So, meh, about half the length, a little, uh, little more than that of the galaxy class. Has a crew of about 450. And various weapons we've seen over time. Phasers, missile batteries, torpedoes. Again, these were nominally under the Ferengi Alliance, but their daemons, as the captains were called, seemed to basically do their own thing one way or the other. And we see them doing many things throughout the show. <laughs> Few of which are outwardly legal. These are referred to as merchant ships, cargo ships, transports, uh, passenger ships. I'm sure the accommodation is fantastic on them. And even warships and what have you. Of course, as we know, after they failed in season one, they only brought in nominally in season two. And by three, they started to kind of rework them into a, a, a conniving joke race. And it's more or less where they stayed throughout the next generation. They, by this point, brought the Romulans back and they would serve as the premier villains when the Borg didn't need to be overused. But the Marauder here is a pretty iconic ship and it's definitely a different ship. This was done early on in the Eagle Moss collection because it is an iconic next generation ship. Kind of horseshoe crab. It has a kind of a main bay here for weapons. This neck could extend and retract. These forks are maybe up here seem to be part of the warp engines. It does seem capable of pretty high warp for that time, at least warp nine, which for a mercantile ship would make sense. The inside seems to be a bit in disarray. Interestingly, we see the controls, and they tend to be kind of globes or spheres, which is neat. There are some interesting ideas, and we do see the insides of these a few times in the series. So, that's something, I suppose. Yeah, it's got these little prongs on it, much like U.S.'s ship over there. This is a metal top and the polymer bottom. And these appear throughout the next generation, Deep Space Nine, and even a couple of times in Voyager. It's just the Ferengi ship. They kind of tone down the idea that it's really a threat to a Federation ship. But more of the danger is their uh, mercantile ways. Of course, that body Space Nine thinks mainly of as a quark, and others too, Rom and Nog. We get a much more fleshed out and, frankly, nuanced portrayal of this race. And they do have some assets, some good things. For one, they claim no slavery, they don't do war, they actually honor contracts, but all this stuff really mostly applies to Ferengis, and namely Ferengi males. Females, well, by the end of Deep Space Nine, they're getting somewhere, but for a long time, they had a long way to go. But, yeah, a neat enough design, and definitely thinking outside the box. They just had to rein in some of Gene's excesses for the Ferengi. And now we come to our third and final and most recent, the Nafar shuttle. The name Nafar is actually from Star Trek Online and a few other beta canon 
Originally, this was introduced as the Ferengi shuttle pod in Season 3 of Next Generation during the Barzan wormhole incident, and it would carry over into Deep Space Nine and even Voyager. Now, there is a bit of a size controversy but and some retconning there, too. When we first see it, it appears to be about 6 meters long and only holds two individuals. It's bigger than a Federation Type 15 shuttle pod, but not by a heck of a lot. But when that exact same shuttle appears in Voyager, when they meet up with the Frangie that have been marooned in the Delta Quadrant, it's grown to the size of about 18 meters. So I tend to kind of think of that as the more or less correct size. Either way, we know that these are carried on board uh, the Decora class. And it seems to be a multi-role, multi-purpose thing. It's a little bit smaller than a runabout at the 18 meters. It's known to be faster than a runabout, which, you know, for a mercantile vessel, transport, cargo ship, that makes sense. It's also known to be very durable, dependable, doesn't need a lot of maintenance. But it is a little less maneuverable, agile, mobile than a uh, runabout because it's not built for combat. It does have shielding. It does have phasers. But it's... You know, it's meant to be more of a passenger thing. We see the Grand Magus with these. We see Liquidator Brunt. And, of course, we see Quark's Treasure, probably the most famous one of this uh, this type. It has a crew of anywhere from two up to about eight. And it has three basic sections, kind of a forward cockpit or tiny bridge area. In the middle, it has living quarters with bunks and a toilet and a food replicator. We see the replicator being used in the Voyager episode, and I believe it's referred to in the episode Little Green Men. This is part of Deep Space Nine as well. And then the back, of course, is a larger area meant for cargo. And we do see it with various modules sometimes. And it is an interesting enough model. Kind of reminds me of like a Viking helmet. Is that just me? I usually think of these prongs. I mean, they give it that Ferengi look for sure as part of the warp system. And then we have a few dots and dashes on the sides. And then we have engines in the back, sublight. And then we have a little cockpit in the front. Boop. Like I said, this first appeared in The Next Generation. It would make a few appearances there, but then we would see it in various guises, even the inside <clears throat> during Deep Space Nine, and then we would see it in Voyager. And not all the alien races really get a shuttle, so it's kind of neat that the Ferengi did. And aside from the retcon to make it a little bigger, which makes sense for the Ferengi, it's pretty consistent throughout as a mercantile private quick shuttle for high-ranking Ferengi and what have you. Again, it's not for combat, although it can defend itself, but that's mostly just to get away. <laughs> and as with the other models from Eagle Moss, the top is metal. These are plastic, as is part of the bottom this is metal, plastic. Even though it's from the shuttle pack, it's nearly big enough to be part of the part of the standard line. I think a lot of people were kind of waiting for this one. Because by this point, Deep Space Nine, the Frankie really are becoming a popular race and Quark becoming one of our very popular figures as you know, as well as Rom and Nog. And by this point they're not villains. They're mostly good guys. But alternative as such, you know, grayish, still comical, but by this point they do have their own code and, you know, but this, they're very much a part of the Star Trek landscape. And that's as far as I can think about it. There's a few stations and probes and whatnot, but these are the main vessels for the Frankie with that we see throughout the show. And here they are, lined up. 
Well, Eagle Moss definitely would have to do the Marauder for any self-respecting starship collection. The, uh, the Enterprise ship and the shuttle pod are really quite bonuses for us. Not many makers would do those. And again, I'm just trying to show in this little informal series that, you know, the first season of any Star Trek show tends to be rocky. The hell, the first season of most shows does. And you don't have to jettison the villain or even the adversary like they did with the Kazon, although that was probably the right call. They gave them two years. In some instances, you can just retool them and rework them and find a place. And, uh, yeah, really have something special. The Ferengi are many things, including exceedingly memorable. I think we can all agree on that. So... Yeah, next generation Ferengi and our little small mercantile and sometimes marauding Ferengi Alliance Starfleet. <laughs> what do you think? Let me know in the comments. As always, feel free to like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. This is Misha. Catch you very soon next time.